praise and honor and glory. Brother Clinton, and you're back on the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ our Lord commanded. Praise the Lord. If you speak English, the Holy Bible, King James Version, is God's Word. And I'd like to open up to Matthew chapter 11 with you. I'd like to have you open up your Bible with me as well to Matthew chapter 11. And I want to share with you verses 25 through 27, but particularly verse 27. And while you're turning there, I just want to say this. We are in very perilous times, and we're headed into even more perilous times. The Bible says that perilous times shall come. And those times are upon us. You and I are living in a time when people all around us are turning into complete zombies. I said this many months ago, and it has come to pass very, very rapidly, as the Lord showed me it would. You were seeing people losing their minds all around us. We're seeing people completely losing their minds, thinking that they have to stay away from each other and not enter into a range within six feet of each other, thinking that they, thinking that there's a pandemic in the world which is ridiculous, and thinking that a ma wearing a surgical mask will keep them from getting a virus, which is also ridiculous, and many other such things. And then we have the election show coming up in a couple of days in the, in the United Socialist States of America, where the people think that they're electing another president, and the, the globalists have complete mayhem planned for that. Those of us who are in Christ Jesus, let's continue praying against their designs. And may their plans fail and may their weapons fall from their hands in the name of Jesus Christ. But you and I are living in a time when people are, are, are being turned into complete zombies. And this is because God has poured out strong delusion upon the people. And people that profess to be Christians are included. Okay, Most people that profess to be Christians are not Christians. And they are under this strong delusion as well. And... The, the reason that God has poured out strong delusion is because it's not because God loves to deceive people, because God loves it when people come to the knowledge of the truth. But the reason that God is pouring out strong delusion upon the world is because the people of the world love unrighteousness. And unto those people that love unrighteousness, strong delusion is being poured out so that they should believe a lie, and so that they might all be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This is the scripture. It is written that in the last days, gross darkness shall cover the earth, and those are the times that we are entering into as we enter into this night season of the sixth day. And so, knowing that, understanding these things, we understand that we are entering into some very perilous times. So we need to be more diligent than ever before to seek our Lord Jesus Christ. And having said that, I want to share with you Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 27. May God bless the reading of his word. It says, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. This is what I want to talk to you about. There are many people, many religious people, who, if you ask them if they were a Christian, would say yes without even having any reservation about it, without even having to think about it, who are completely deceived. And the reason that they're completely deceived is because they're looking for truth in all the wrong places. And the reason that they're looking for truth in all the wrong places is because they don't really want the truth. Because if they really wanted the truth, they would look for it in the only place that it could be found in the Word of God. You see, as I've said many times, you will never know God through theology. By studying theology, you will never come to know the truth of God. In fact, the more you study theology, the further off into the darkness and the further from the light of the truth of God you will be. 
You see, you cannot figure out God. You cannot figure out God. Hold your place in Matthew and come with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I want to share with you the 14th verse. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says this, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You see, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. A theologian is carnal. He is a natural man. The Jehovah's Witnesses are theologians. The Mormons are theologians. Calvinists, Baptists, Lutherans, they are theologians. These are people that study in seminaries and study theological nonsense. And in studying these things, they imagine that they are learning about God and that they are figuring out God. And a man who graduates from a seminary who has been thoroughly confused on purpose by the Jesuits of Rome, doesn't matter what seminary it is, there isn't a seminary that isn't controlled by the Jesuits of Rome. These men come forth from these seminaries completely and totally confused, and they have a piece of paper that they call a doctorate of divinity or a degree of divinity. What a ridiculous term. A degree of divinity or a doctorate of divinity. A doctor is someone who, it's, it's the, a doctor is a word who has mastered something to the point where he is able to teach it. And these people, in their delusion, imagine that they are doctors of divinity, doctors of that which is divine. Just like we read of in, in, in the scripture, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John talks about the doctors of the law. These are the same generation, the same wicked generation of people that instead of seeking God in his word and on their knees, they went to seminary instead. And they got confused by seminary teachers who were put there on purpose by the Jesuits of Rome to deceive them. Line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken, and snared, and taken. Just like the scripture says. And they go to seminary with a Bible in their hand, and they learn how to negate the scriptures and twist them around, and argue away things that they don't want to believe. And in their carnality and foolishness, they imagine that they are doctors of the divine. And nothing could possibly be more ridiculous. You see, you cannot figure out God. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. I remember a long time ago sitting in a church meeting when I was real young, just born again. I wasn't even a Christian yet. Wasn't even saved yet, but I was born again, and, 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 and I was filled with the Holy Ghost, and I was in a meeting where a man, a theologian, and, and, and I love this man, his name, his name is Kevin Zuber, and there's a video on this channel where I reached out to him, and if anybody knows Kevin Zuber, please let me know so that I can reach him with this video that I've put up, it's got to be five or six or seven years ago now, that I put up this video reaching out to him, but this man, Kevin Zuber, is a very respected theologian, And he's lost and confused. He doesn't know who the Lord Jesus Christ is, and he doesn't know how to be saved from his sins. But he has several degrees from several seminaries, and and he's a, a respected speaker and has been for many years. And when I was in prison in 1997, he came to Phoenix FCI. He used to come there on a regular basis every Monday night and preach the word in the chapel. And I used to attend his meetings until this particular meeting when he was talking about people that say that they have received the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues and prophesy, just like the scripture says. And he was making a mockery of people that actually believe that. And he was talking about receiving the Holy Ghost as if only a stupid backwoods hick 
would believe such a ridiculous thing. And he was mocking, saying, I received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Eh, 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 eh. He was mocking the gift of the Holy Ghost, standing there in the pulpit in a meeting professing to be, you know, of, of people professing to be Christians. And that was the last time that I went. I, I can't remember if I stood up and walked out right then or if I sat there until the end and then just never came back. I don't remember, but there are people like this who, who, who go to seminary and study Greek and Hebrew to become thoroughly confused. And they think that they have a doctorate of divinity. They think that they are doctors of the divine. They are natural men who cannot receive the, spirit, the, the things of the Spirit of God. The things of the Spirit of God are foolishness unto them, unto the doctors of the law, unto the theologians, unto those that, that don't seek God, but they go to seminary instead. See, the Word of God is foolishness unto them. The gospel of Jesus Christ that the apostles preached, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's foolishness unto them. They say, oh, no, no, no. That's not how it works. You're just automatically saved as soon as you agree with the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead. You've believed. Now you're saved. That's a strong delusion. That has absolutely nothing to do with anything that's written in the Bible anywhere. But these people seriously believe that. And so the title of this video is, You Cannot Figure Out God. You cannot figure out God. Come back with, to, to Matthew chapter 11 with me. You cannot figure out God. Okay, You're not going to figure out God by going to seminary. In fact, you're going to go the complete opposite direction from the light where God dwells if you're in a seminary. Okay, You're not going to figure out God by listening to YouTube videos, including this one. You're not going to figure out God by going to church and sitting under the ministry of a pastor. Not that it's a bad thing to have a pastor and sit under his ministry if it's a real pastor called of God. But a pastor isn't put in your path to, to enable you to figure out God. See, you're not going to figure out God by listening to what Brother Clinton says. There's only one way that you can come to know God. That is by knowing his son, Jesus Christ. Listen, Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. All things are delivered unto me, said the Lord, the Son of God. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. And no man knoweth the Son, but the Father. No man knoweth the Son, but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. You see, you cannot know God by any other way than having his Son reveal him to you, because the Son of God is the image of the invisible God. Now, when we read these words, let's not imagine a trinity of gods, because that's a myth. Okay? There's, that's, that's a myth from Babylon and Egypt. There is no trinity. Okay, if you're here on this Christian ministry channel, then, pardon me, then you should know better than that. And if you don't, I'm not saying this to shame you, but I'm saying this so, to cause you to be provoked to, to search the scriptures and to see that there is no triune God. There's, 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 there's no trinity of gods mentioned anywhere in the Bible. There's no gods called God the Son or God the Holy Spirit. The only God that exists, the only true God, is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, The God of my Lord Jesus Christ is my God, and His Father is my Father. Okay, The Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is not a deity. He is not a God called the Son. There is no God called the Son. The Egyptians worship a God called the Sun, the Sun God, Osiris. But we who are Christians, we don't. We worship the true and living God. Jesus, the Son of God, said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So when we worship God in spirit and in truth, we don't make up other gods called God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, and profess that there are other gods that are co-equal, co-existent, or co-eternal with the Almighty God who made the heavens and the earth. 
because that's not only Babylonian and Egyptian myth, it's also heresy. Okay, That's what's called in the Bible heresy. Proclaiming other gods that don't exist and, and proclaiming that those other gods that don't exist are equal with the true and living God who made the heavens and the earth, that's heresy. Okay, So we don't say that because we speak as the oracles of God. The Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Period. That means if it's not written in the word of God, we as Christians don't speak it. Okay, So we don't say Trinity, Triune, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Eternal Son, Preexistent, Theophany, um, Co-equal, Co-existent, Co-eternal. We don't use those terms. Okay, The only time that I ever use those terms is to teach you not to believe those terms because those terms are not in the Bible. And if they're not in the Bible, then they have nothing to do with our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God, as the Bible says. He's not God the Son. He's the Son of God. Those two are not the same thing. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, he said. He is the heir of all things. Jesus Christ our Lord, the Son of God, is the heir of all things. He is the only man that ever lived upon the face of the earth who inherited the kingdom of God based upon his own merit and righteousness. He is the heir to the throne. And that's why he is exalted by the right hand of God and set down upon the right hand of the majesty on high. He said, To him that overcometh will I give to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. That's where the right hand of God is. It is on the throne. There is a man who is seated on the throne of God, and the Almighty God to whom the throne pertains is in that man. And so God is in his Son, Jesus Christ, seated upon the throne. There is one throne and one seated upon the throne. There is one judge before whom all the world will stand, and his name is Jesus Christ, and God is in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son save the Father. Okay. No man knoweth the Son save the Father. The Father, God the Father, is the only one who knows His Son. And He sent His Son into the world with His Word in Him. Because He told Moses, God told Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 18, after Moses came to the Lord and said, The people of Israel, they said that they don't want to hear your voice anymore, Lord, because if they hear your voice anymore, they're afraid they're going to die. And the Lord said unto Moses, They have well spoken all that they have spoken. And I want you to tell them that I'm going to raise up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto you, Moses, and I'm going to put my words in his mouth. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hear the words that he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So when John was preaching in the wilderness the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, the Pharisees came to him and they said, Art thou that prophet? Now, John the Baptist was a prophet, but he was not that prophet. And so he said, no, I'm not. That prophet is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the man, Christ Jesus, in whom dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Word of God is God himself. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The word that God spoke out of his mouth saying, let there be light, that's God. Okay, It's not another God. It's not the Son of God. It's God. The word is God. The word isn't the Son of God. The word is God. I'm not making this up, folks. That's what the Bible says. It says it very clearly and not in any parable. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning, when, when, when things began to exist, they began to exist because God spoke it. God spoke it. That's the Word of God. And the Word of God was with God, of course, just like my Word is with me and your Word is with you. And the Word was God. The Word was God. The Word isn't the Son of God. The Word is in the Son of God. You see? 
And that's why the Bible says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word of God is in the Son of God. That's how the Word of God was made manifest. Because the people said they didn't want to hear God speak anymore. Because His voice is so terrible, they thought they would die. So God sent His Son, a prophet, to speak His Word unto the people of Israel and unto the world. And this is why the writer of Hebrews said, God, who in, in various times, sundry times and in diverse manners, spake in, time fast, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. The world that now is and the world that is to come. All these things were made by and for our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. This is the part that I want to concentrate on with you. Neither knoweth any man the Father, no man knows God the Father. You cannot know God the Father by studying theology. Never. I mean never. It's not possible. It's not ever going to happen. I don't care who you are. I don't care how smart you think you are. You are not a doctor of divinity. There is no such thing as a doctor of divinity. The more you study theology, the further off into the darkness you will become. The more the more profundity of darkness you shall attain unto the longer you remain a student of theology. But if you will come to the Son of God, if you will come to the Son of God, then He will reveal His Father to you. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners hath spoken in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by His Son. He hath not spoken unto us by seminaries, nor by the Baptist Church, nor by the Lutheran Church, nor by the Pentecostal Church, nor by the Catholic Church, nor by the Latter-day Saints Church, nor by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and on and on and so on and so forth. You get the point. God in these last days has spoken to us by His Son. If you want to know the Father, then you need to know His Son. And the only way that you can know His Son is by the words that are written in this Holy Bible. You see, there are many who come on YouTube and in various other places and they say, oh, you don't need the Bible to know God. All you have to do is listen to the Spirit. Just listen to the Spirit. Oh, wait a second. What Spirit? Oh, Brother Clinton, the Holy Spirit, of course. Well, how are you going to know that a spirit which is speaking to you is the Holy Spirit if you don't know his word. The Bible says that there are many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. There are many spirits who will come to you and say, oh, I'm the Holy Spirit and this and that and the other thing. There's a woman out there named Mary Kay Baxter who thinks that she's gotten divine revelations of hell from God. She thinks it was the Holy Spirit who showed her hell. If she had known the Word of God, she wouldn't have been fooled by that. But she was. There was a man a long time ago, a, a false prophet who is dead now, whose name was Joseph Smith, who believed when a spirit came to him that that spirit was a holy angel. The spirit called itself Moroni. And only a moron would believe that Moroni was a holy angel. But Joseph Smith was a moron. And I don't mean that to be sarcastic. And that might even be the origin of the word. I don't know. Maybe the word moron came from Moroni. But Joseph Smith didn't know that Moroni was a devil because Joseph Smith was a Freemason and he didn't know the scripture. He was a Satanist. And he denied the word of God and received the word of a devil. And those are just two examples of, the, of hundreds or thousands.
of people that have been fooled by deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils because they say, well, the, the Holy Spirit showed me this. And some of them even call their God Holy Spirit. Their, their God doesn't have a name. They just go, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Well, wait a second. What is the name of the Holy Spirit? The name of the Holy Spirit, according to the Word of God, is Jesus Christ. You see, the only Holy Spirit that there is, is the Almighty God who made the heavens and the earth, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Holy Spirit. According to the Bible, He is the Holy Spirit. But if you don't know that, and you just go to church or go to seminary, then you think that the Holy Spirit is another God, a co-equal God that was supposedly there in the beginning with the Almighty God who made the heavens and the earth. And you, furthermore, you think that the Holy Spirit is just a God without a name. He's just the third person of the Trinity. Just, just the Holy Spirit. What's the name of the Holy Spirit? Just, just Holy Spirit. That's his name. Come on now. Can you see how ridiculous that is? Jesus said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. What's the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? We don't have to guess. The Bible tells us. Because ten days later, the apostles that he was instructing began to preach, repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, Jesus Christ is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But when people say, well, you, you don't need the Bible, you just need to follow the Spirit. You just need to know Jesus, they say. Well, you know what? There's lots of different Jesuses. There's lots of different Jesuses. I live in Costa Rica. There's probably ten guys named Jesus in my pueblo. Okay? Jesus Hernandez, Jesus Gonzalez. But there's only one Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way that you can know him is by his declaration of himself in his word. How do you know the Son of God? The Son of God is ascended into the heavens. Okay, He's not standing on the earth anymore in a human body like he was 2,000 years ago. He will be soon again. He's coming back again. But right now he's ascended into the heavens and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So how can you know him? By reading his word. Well, how do you know that, Brother Clinton? Because Jesus said, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, you cannot figure out God. You can't figure out God. You can't figure him out by going to a God school, you know, a Bible school, a seminary, whatever you want to call it. You can't. You can't. That's not my opinion. That's a fact. The Bible testifies of it. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here little and there little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. That's what God's Word says about theology. It's written in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 13. The more you study theology, the more confused you will be. The longer you go to church the more confused you will be. Because when you go to church, you're going to sit in front of a man who graduated from a seminary who calls himself a doctor of divinity. Which is ridiculous, because there is no such thing as a doctor of divinity. You see, so if you go sit in front of a man who's graduated from a seminary and listen to the drivel that he throws at you, you're in the same boat as he is, having gone to a seminary and listened to all the drivel that they taught him in seminary. Every tree is known by his fruit. If you want to know God, there's only one way. You need to turn off your internet connection, open up your Holy Bible, King James Version, and stay there. Stay there. Seek God in his word and in prayer. And yes, listen to his spirit, but you need to know that it's his spirit if a spirit speaks to you. And the only way that you're going to know 
which spirit is the true Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ and which spirit is not the true Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ is by knowing his word. Try the spirits, for there are many false prophets that are gone out into the world. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, wherever you have heard that it should come into the world, and it already is in the world. Okay, we are of God, little children. This is what John said in 1 John chapter 4. He said, we are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see, they are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You see, when we are born of this word, the words that are written on the pages of this Bible, when we're born of this word and we abide in this word, when we desire the sincere milk of this word daily, growing in the revelation of God through his word, because his word is spirit and his word is life, then we have that word in us and it, 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 it enables us to discern between that which is true and that which is false. It enables us to discern the difference between darkness and light. A person who is in this word, in the word of God, day after day after day, is not going to be able to sit in a denominational church week after week after week and, and remain content with the dead bread that is being thrown at them. A person who is in this word, seeking God in this word, wouldn't make it past the first week of seminary training. You can't go to seminary if you believe this word. Because they will either throw you out or fail you. Okay, you will not be able to sit in a seminary and listen to the nonsense and antichrist garbage that they teach you in a seminary. It doesn't matter if it's a a Baptist seminary or a Catholic seminary or a Lutheran seminary or a Pentecostal seminary or an apostolic seminary, it doesn't matter. They're all from the Jesuits of Rome and they're all teaching lies. Just a different version of lies for people that like different versions of lies, I guess. <clears throat> but you see, if you're in this word and this word is in you, you can't go to seminary. You can't sit in a denominational church. And you can't get that from YouTube. You can't get it from an internet search. You can't get it from Google. Google is the devil. Google is the devil. Yes, that's right. I said that. It's the truth. Google is a, is a system of artificial intelligence which is inhabited and run by the devil. When you Google something, you're asking the devil. Okay, now the devil is the god of this world, and if you want to know something about this world, then that's fine. If you want to know how many floors the Empire State Building has, I'm sure you can Google it, and Google will tell you. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. But if you want to know God, then the devil won't give you the revelation. See, you can't get it anywhere else but by knowing the Son of God. When you know the Son of God, then He will reveal the Father to you, because the Father who sent Him is in Him. And this is why when Philip said unto Him, Lord, show us the Father, Jesus said, Philip, How long have I been with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? You see, God the Father, the only true and living God, is in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is why Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you want to know God the Father, there's only one person who can reveal him to you, and that is his Son, Jesus Christ. And if you want to know the Son of God, then he's given us his word. This is where you need to be. Praise the Lord. I know this is an unpopular message, among the, the you know so-called Christians. But it's the truth. You see, if you don't have this word in you, and you in it, then you're not going to make it into the kingdom of God. I don't care if you go to church every week. I don't care if you sing in the choir. I don't care if you drive the Sunday school bus. I don't care if you clean the toilets at your church. 
I don't care if you speak in tongues and heal the sick and raise the dead. All in Jesus' name. If you're not abiding in His Word, then you don't know Him. And if that's your state right now, then it's time for you, my friend, to turn off your internet connection and leave it off and open up your Holy Bible, King James Version, and get on your face before God and tell Him that you have wasted all the time that you're going to waste and that you are intent on seeking Him in His Word and ask Him to reveal Himself to you. And He will. Praise the Lord. This is Brother Clinton. I'm out for now. Peace.